I'm here in the backyard in Brooklyn right now, out in Williamsburg. We're actually going to be leaving here in a couple days. We're going to be moving to another part of Brooklyn, which is a lot more neighborhood-like, with a lot of trees and a lot more calmer, just like a better neighborhood in general. So um, I need to get these plants moved into some bigger containers. Right here, I've got the miracle fruit, which is actually really leafed out a lot more. But um, I want to put it in a bigger container. And this isn't a permanent container here. I want to actually get a nice terracotta pot eventually, but uh, this is bigger just for the meantime to get everything situated. And then once I transplant this one, I'm going to have this empty, and I'm going to be able to put the Inca berry that I've got right here, which is already forming little, it's almost like a tomatillo. This one is kind of running out of room. It's not, it's not as happy as it could be. So I'm going to put that in the old container of the miracle fruit. So I went to the farmer's market today and I got some uh, potting soil from the Lower East Side Ecology Center. I know some of you guys out there might want to think that, you know, I can go to Home Depot and buy some, uh, some organic potting soil from, you know, like Miracle Girl. They sell organic potting soil and, um, you know, it's organic, blah, blah, blah. Don't give those jerks any money. Support the local people that make soil, make it yourself, do whatever you gotta do, but don't give those guys any more money because they're just gonna use it to keep making chemicals and all that crap. So support your local soil maker as well as your local food producers as well. I'm gonna put a little bit in here, just enough to get, you know, you wanna make sure uh, you got a little room on the bottom, kind of make like a, a cone shape. You know, as you can see, this is only about 25% uh, full, and then we're going to drop in the rest and then surround the rest. And also, I've got some of the uh, biodynamic compost here from Steve Storch and Natural Science Organics. I'm going to mix some of that in right now, too. I'm going to give a good, good handful and stir that into the bottom. And then while I'm at it and get my hands dirty, I might as well throw some in the original 20 pound bag that I bought today at the farmer's market. I'm gonna mix that in. They already put in worm castings, but you know, this biodynamic stuff is really, really where it's at. So we're gonna mix in some more of that. I got three five gallon pails of this stuff, so definitely a long way to go. This stuff is really great. They put green sand in here, they put worm castings, a lot of different stuff. Really, really happy with it. All right, so let's transplant the miracle fruit. Hopefully it comes out pretty easily. Um, it's been in here for quite a while, so I'm thinking that we should have a pretty solid root ball. And she's, she's done really well. She's produced uh, a lot of berries already, and I've seen at some you know, high-end gourmet food places, they sell these miracle berries for $6 a piece. So you know this is definitely a... Uh, kind of a hot item. Yeah, the soil still is a little loose, unfortunately. So what I'm gonna do, I really thought there was, it was gonna be a little more solid and I could just pop it out. Not bad, but it could be better. So that's in here. It's gonna be about even, and then we'll just fill in the sides with the rest of the biodynamic stuff. I'm just going to dump it in and then I got to save a little bit of soil left over for the Inca berry. That looks pretty good. And uh, this shouldn't be stressed out at all and this is going to get nice and big now. And remember if you do grow miracle fruits keep it in the shade. It doesn't like direct sunlight. It likes warm, humid, indirect sunlight if you know what I mean. Perfect house plant actually. I mean, it can't get too warm, of course, but, and that looks really good. I'm going to give this a nice watering afterwards, and um, it's going to be all set. So I'm going to put this back in the corner where sunlight doesn't touch it, and that one's all ready. So now, since we've got this empty bucket, I'm going to put the Inca berry into this one. And I know this one has a pretty solid root mass already. So I'm going to pick up all the crumbs that came off with that one. I'm going to dump in some more filler on the bottom. Just enough to bring it up to the right height. I think 20 pounds is just about perfect. And then, very gently, we're going to 
slide this out. Okay, so you can see right here, we've got a lot of uh, roots going on. These want to expand, they need to, if I'm going to get more, more results from this girl, she needs a little more room to grow because it was a little confining. Just like people, they need, they need room to thrive. I'm gonna fill in the rest. A pretty easy transplant overall because we're using really good soil. And I'm just gonna spread this around. Sorry if you guys can't see what I'm doing here. Just for the sake of uh, keeping her nice and healthy. We don't want it don't want to disturb her too much. I'm gonna spin it around a little bit and then fill in the other side of the soil and then give her some water as well. And I got a little left over just for good measure. So this should be just about right for her I think. Uh, it shouldn't be, um, she shouldn't need too much more and it's already almost August 1st so she's got a couple months left and we'll see how it goes. And if she looks like she needs a little more room uh, we can always put her into another container and then I'm going to water her. So what I do for my water here in the city is that I pour the tap water, the stuff coming out of the hose, I put it in a five gallon container and I let that sit for a couple days and let all the chlorine come off. It'll evaporate. It'll, after about a day or two it'll evaporate off and then that way um, you're working with a cleaner product. I'll stir in the biodynamic stuff, the sea minerals, and then water the plants. I usually never ever give direct hose water to a plant. It's just they don't like it, you wouldn't like it. It boggles my mind how some people will just like spray down cold chlorinated water on their plants and they wonder why their plants aren't really happy. So that's the idea. Let, it, uh, let the chlorine go away and just hit the roots, you know, give it a little sprinkle uh, with your hands. You don't need to don't need to douche it in hard, cold water. And that is the name of the game. She looks pretty happy. When I bought her, she was uh, really small, probably about four inches tall. And now she's doing really well. And this is gonna get way bigger in the next couple months too. I mean, it's still pretty early. That's it guys, miracle fruit back there. Inca berry over here. Uh, some good soil, by biodynamic preps. Uh, you can't go wrong and uh, make sure your water is not chlorinated because the uh, good bacteria in the soil really doesn't like it too much and neither would you. So uh, take care and um, it's going to be raining soon so i got to get these ready. Lots of love, take care, rawmodel.com. Peace.